from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering WTG Transform 2018. Brought to you by Winslow Technology Group. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and you're watching theCUBE's coverage of WTG Transform 2018. Happy to welcome back to the program, fresh off the keynote stage where he discussed the specter of cloud. Rick Allen, who's the Chief Technology Officer of Winto Technology Group. Rick, great thank, to talk to you. Thanks for having me, Stu. All right, yeah, thank you for having us here. So, <laughs> sure. uh, we're talking about this whole cloud thing, and you and I have been talking about this for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, give, give us your viewpoint. You talk to a lot of customers, we can talk about architecture, but you know, the average customer, when they hear, you know, cloud, uh, you know, there's some puffy things up in the sky, but mm -hmm. you know, what, what does it mean to them? Sure, yeah, so I think one of the things that we're advocating as it relates to sort of starting that cloud journey is to do some homework ahead of time, uh, make data-driven decisions, uh, and we don't want you as our you know, customer base to get into a situation where you're uh, kind of backed into a corner, right? Where you move something and you decide you need to bring it back or, or, uh, or anything like that. So we're, we're a big advocate of you know, running some analytics and making some intelligent decisions. You know, try and start with that low-hanging fruit where you can kind of ease your way in and, and the stuff that doesn't require replatforming and you know, get your toes, your toes in the sand a little bit before you uh, uh, wait all the way out there. Yeah, so if I step back for a second, mm -hmm. I guess what, from, from a customer standpoint, sure. what, one of the things I liked in your keynote mm -hmm. is so many times we think about technology, it's like, oh well, it's a new server or it's you know, something I swipe a credit card and I go use in the cloud. Cloud, really we need to think about the operating model. Because sure. it's the policies and the people sure. that are as important, if not more important, than the, okay, what's the price per CPU and things like that. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, and, and one of the things that we talk about a lot is um, that when we're talking about cloud, we're not talking about a place, we're not talking about who owns it, we're not talking about any particular public cloud provider, we're talking about a way of doing business, a way of bringing your uh, services to your internal customers, uh, and a way of kind of transforming your IT infrastructure uh, to more efficiently consume those resources, right? Uh, and that's that's a change in operating model, that's a change in uh, sort of way of thinking, um, not just from you know this whole cloud thing, but also towards uh, delivering IT more as a service. Yeah, and you spent a lot of time talking about applications, which I really mm -hmm. like, because I'm an infrastructure guy by background. When we talked about virtualization, when we talked about converged and hyper-converged, a lot of times we're talking about you know boxes and cabling and networking and things sure. like that. The role of infrastructure is to run my application. The role of the application is to run my business. Right. That's the, the big theme we've been hearing for years is you know IT your role isn't to be this thing off on the side or and right. it's not necessarily you know dollars and headcount and all that are important, but if you don't serve the ultimate business and what yeah. they need to do to keep us running, we're, we're all out of business. Right, yeah, this whole transformation is all about aligning right, those business requirements with IT and starting to deliver services that are tailored towards what the business needs as opposed to what I can offer, what my capabilities are, right? Those need to be more uh, in sync and that's what this whole uh, operating model is all about, right? Is aligning those services to the business and, and creating the infrastructure so that the business can consume it more easily. Yeah, and you gave some really good pointers. Ta ta I want you to give us, the, you know, your customers because when I heard things like, oh, well, you know, let's say I'm using a public cloud. Well, I need to understand how availability zones work mm -hmm. and how I spread things out, which, you know, if I'm used to, you know, HA on VMware or, mm -hmm. you know, your hypervisor of choice, some of those things, I, I got used to it because things right. work. They were built for the enterprise. Now it's, you know, well, it's distributed, but you need to think about things from that application level a little bit more. Right, yeah. Uh, and so that's something that we're trying to educate our, our customer base on is, um, as we move forward and as we start to move workloads into uh, various, you know, clouds, public, private, what have you, we have to start considering some of those availability aspects that today we don't even think about, right? Almost everybody who's still sitting in that traditional infrastructure, um, they're all having their availability provided probably at the hardware level. They have you know, multiple controllers and clusters and all this stuff, so they, put a, they drop an application into their environment and it's already going to have pretty good availability. When we, as we move forward, we have to start pushing that availability up the stack and thinking about it more at the application level. And so when we're deploying workloads into different uh, cloud environments, we may be responsible for providing our own high availability. Uh, and that's something that 
in some cases requires a fair amount of expertise to, to you know, get that architecture right so that we do have the same level of high availability out in these cloud environments that we have in our on-prem infrastructure. All right, so Rick, inside your customers, you know, who are the people you're talking to that kind of get this? You know, we, we lived through the transformation of like, well, you know, the storage guy was doing his thing, we need to kind of have the virtualization person own more. You know, cloud yeah. architect has been a title that's been, you know, expanding quite a lot over the, over the last few years. Yeah. Um, who are you getting at the table? Who's making these architectural decisions when you're working with your users? Yeah, um, so we feel like it's something that we have to get the entire team on board with. Um, it's something where it might be an initiative that we start to address with the CIOs and the IT directors, but it's important to, to get the entire organization's IT staff on board with the transition because each one is going to have a part to play in, in sort of moving forward into that IT as a service sort of a organization. Great, so, uh, you know, when I looked at some of the things uh, that uh, WTG is doing, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, you know, Dell, EMC, Nutanix, VMware, yep. Yep. your biggest partners, uh, you know, what, what's kind of, you know, the, the, the big, you know, big push today from the majority of your customers, and, and what are some of the you know, more advanced customers getting excited about? Yeah, so I think you, know, you listed off those, those partners, and when we look at them, a common theme there is adding this built-in uh, sort of cloud interoperability, connectivity, and feature set. So when we're thinking about all the characteristics that we look for in a cloud operating model, we're seeing things like uh, self-service portals, uh, things like um, you know the ability to measure uh, multiple tenants and, and things like this. And so what we're seeing across all those partners is more and more of those features come as part of the infrastructure solutions, and that's reducing the burden on our customers to be able to deploy something that you know operates in that cloud sort of IT as a service um, offering. And so you know some of these customers are getting really excited about that capability to right out of the box deploy a self-service portal, uh, deliver these these uh, capabilities straight to their internal customers uh, without having to do a bunch of development or, or um, you know, build complicated uh, systems to deliver them. Uh, so it's the self-service portals, it's the built-in cloud connectivity to be able to archive things and, and, and uh, send DR out to, uh, you know, third-party service providers. Um, so those are some of the things that are uh, customers who are on this journey and you know maybe they started last year, the year before, they're moving forward. Those are the sorts of things that they're starting to deploy now. Yeah, you know, one of the big challenges when we talk about uh, this rather dispersed world we're moving towards. Mm -hmm. uh, you spent some time talking about SaaS. Absolutely, SaaS is the biggest piece of, yeah. you know, if you call it public cloud, some of it doesn't live in one of the big clouds. Sure. It can live lots of places. Yeah. Um, data, right. data protection, yeah. and security are something that no matter where I go, I need to worry about that. It's, there's, there's no way, I actually, in your, your definition, you're like, oh, if I do SaaS, I don't need to worry about the data. No, 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 right. you need to, <laughs> right. I, I think you took somebody's slide there. <laughs> yep. um, but, you know, there are some people that mistakenly, oh, well, I ran on a PaaS, I don't need to worry about security. No, right. you do. Right. Containers, any of these things, data protection, my data, uh, and you yeah. know, security, I need to worry about that everywhere, and that, that yep. brings a whole new set of challenges. Yeah, and, and you know, so you make a good point because on the, for example, on the security side of things, it's continues to be uh, just as much of a concern as it ever was, but it's an entirely different way to think about it. Um, you know, likewise with data protection. Uh, it's just as important as it ever was, but it's an entirely different way to think about it. One of the things though that I thought was really interesting about security um, is that when I'm talking to these CIOs and IT directors across our customer base, in the past, you know, if I go back, rewind this thing three years, they would say, I can't go to the cloud because of security, <laughs> right? Now, we're, you know, we're a little bit more mature in, in our cloud understanding and, and uh, starting to you know, transform a little bit. And they now that list that as one of the reasons they want to move to the cloud. And I think that, that was one of the most uh, startling sort of realizations is, is that shift in Mindshare. Yeah, absolutely. We, we actually did, uh, did some surveys. There was a big survey we were attached with called uh, the future of cloud computing. And you're right, if I hadn't dipped my toe in, I was worried about it. Mm. But once I got there, I realized I kind of looked inside and said, oh my gosh, what did I be doing? Interesting analogy I, I, I've paired sometimes is, you know, the autonomous vehicles and things like that. I'm worried about the self-driving or even the braking or things like that that's mm -hmm. challenging. 
have you looked at most drivers? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. Most people, yeah, you know, exactly. oh my gosh, they're checking their texts, they're, you know, <laughs> yeah. doing all sorts of stuff yeah. there. It, 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 it is a bit of a mind flip as to how you think of these things. Doesn't mean it changes overnight or that there's there's never a silver bullet in IT, yeah. Um, yeah. but, you know, it's, it's some of these viewpoints that we need to change and think a little differently. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great analogy. I'm probably going to steal that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Rick, what, what's exciting you these days? You're, you're a CTO, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're here, there's, uh, you know, Boston area. I'd love if you've got, you know, anything about, you know, cool things in the area or just cool tech in general. Yeah, I think, um, you know, and, and I addressed a lot of this in, in my keynote earlier today, but I'm really high on, on um, an analytical approach to a hybrid cloud. Uh, I want to start to get customers thinking about, you know, how we can make this a transition as opposed to a, uh, you know, just jump it right in the deep end. It doesn't have to be this, this big, uh, jarring event as we sort of transform. This is something where we can take baby steps um, and and start to move ourselves forward. Uh, and so, you know, we're getting really excited about those technologies that allow us to integrate our existing infrastructure with uh, various other, you know, cloud services, whether they be, you know, platforms, infrastructure, and software offerings. Uh, things that allow us to take the investments that we already have and, you know, sort of integrate and make use of these cloud services that we know can deliver value to our, our organization. That's what we're most excited about is you know getting more out of what we have. Yeah, you, you mentioned analytics. I mean, here in Boston, you had in the, the opening video. There was some of the I think it was the Boston Dynamics sure. robots. Yep. You know, right, right across the river here yep. In, yep. Uh, in the area. Um, when I talk to people like in the storage world, we talk about intelligence but their eyes light up because we've been talking about intelligent storage for decades, but no, yeah. no, really now the, with all the cool technologies that yeah. we can get, we can really put this in here and it's not about, you know, getting rid of the admins, it's about really supercharging and be able to deal with, you know, we've got way more data, we've got way more devices, we've got way more things I'm going to have to do, so, you know, we need some help with all of these machines to be able to pair the machines with the people to make them yeah. be able to do their jobs better. Yep, yep, couldn't agree more. All right, well, Rick so. Allen, pleasure to catch up with you. Hey, and uh, thanks, again, th thanks so much for, for having us here. Uh, be sure to check out thecube.net for all of the content here and all the shows. We'll be back with lots more coverage. Thanks for watching theCUBE.